So this is a video that was made by one of the Warcraft devs, and it was just put out a little bit ago. And I'll go ahead and take a look and watch this real quick and see kind of where it's coming from. And personal update, after 13 years at Blizzard on the WoW team, Shadowlands will be my final expansion. The Team 2, Blizzard, Team 2 is the, the Warcraft team, for anybody that doesn't know. Uh, Blizzard and WoW fans, thank you. Hi everyone. In this video, I'm just going to do a quick personal update on me. And that, uh, that personal update is that after 13 years working at Blizzard on World of Warcraft, I've decided to leave. And uh, the reason why I'm making this video, I guess, is just because it's been four weeks or so since I've left. And I think anybody who's oh, ever sure. worked at a company and left like I have uh, knows this experience of your friends and your coworkers and people that care about you reaching out and wondering, you know, why did you leave and what's the story and what are you yeah. up to next? But um, I thought about making a tweet or a, a post or something like that. But I thought ultimately maybe making a video might be the way to go. So for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Chris Clakey. I'm a game designer. I worked at Blizzard Wait, since uh, 2000. I've been saying his name wrong for fucking five years. I thought it was Chris Kaliki. Fuck, man. Now I feel like an asshole. Damn it, dude. What? In <laughs> seven or so. Um, and I worked on the Shit. WoW team doing system design. Okay. Mainly class, class design and uh, PvP. Um, and before working at Blizzard, you know, I was a huge Blizzard fan, just like uh, many of you. I, uh, yeah. I uh, played a lot Those of Warcraft 3, I played a lot Ooh. of Starcraft, and I played Same. World of Warcraft since it was in early beta. Damn. And um, in WoW, I was a guild leader of a kind of a um, more popular PvP guild at the time on Ticonderous. And uh, some of the things that I really loved to Wait, do what guild was he in? Was it like one of those fucking like Spurg guilds in Ticondrius for PvP? Hey, I'm MVP? No, there's no way. If that's actually who he was GM of, that's actually so fucking funny, man. Because I remember any time that you would ever queue in and you'd see somebody from that guild, you would just know that they're probably a dickhead and they're probably better than you are. Doing wow, you know, outside of play, it was really kind of the theory craft about the, the game. You know, Maybe. think about you know, what they should change, what they should remove, what spells they should add, things like that. You know, I'd really like bug my guild about, you know, bouncing ideas off them. Um, I would mm -hmm. do these uh, uh, these fake patch notes that would go viral <laughs> where, uh, you know, I would list out things that I felt like they should change in the game. Yeah, that'd um, be great. And things that I predicted they would change. And uh, I think they went viral, right, because um, people wishful really did thinking. think a lot of those changes should be added. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, and in fact, a lot That's of times wishful they would thinking. add them later on. Um, and one thing led to another, and I kind of met uh, someone who worked at Blizzard um, through my server, and I sent him a lot of my ideas and things that they should change. All right. And uh, they started to add a lot of those ideas to the game. And um, one thing led to another, and uh, you know, they kind of suggested maybe I... I applied to be a designer there, and I did, and uh, wow. you know, the interview went well, and uh, right. you know, kind of the rest is history. <laughs> and um, damn, that's good. You know, one of my original goals when I started to work at Blizzard was really not just uh, class design, but also PvP. I was a I was a big PvPer as well, and um, but the thing is, the team was a lot smaller than I imagined. You know, I think as a player, I thought, oh, shit. well, they probably have a warrior designer and a priest designer and a hunter designer. And oh shit! You telling me the same dude that designs mages is doing my warrior? I bet if that's the case, I bet that dude's main is a mage. Like that's I'm. Oh no, man. You know, they all hang out and go to Starbucks. But uh, the, yeah. the reality was that the team was a lot smaller than that. And um, it was really kind of me at the time for a while, just me and another uh, class designer, uh, this guy, Kevin Jordan, who really designed out a lot of the early classes. Wait, so what? This was like around. Oh, shit. Kevin Jordan. Wait, what the hell? I didn't even realize this. Oh, my God. You know, production time of Wrath of the Lich King. And there was a lot of. Uh, you know, classes. I didn't know he's been working expansion. on WoW for that um, long. I remember one of the first things I worked on was um, I wanted to change the Discipline Priest's pain suppression because at the time it would only work on the priests, but I wanted it to work on allies and uh, yeah, uh, on allies as well. And so that really kind of transformed the spec from just being um, for you know 
to be more viable in, in, good in, yeah. uh, in PvP and also uh, in raids. And uh, that was kind of really one of my main focuses as well, is just that you know the team at the time was very kind of on the fence of whether they wanted certain specs to be PvP specs or PvE specs. You know, should uh, should warriors mainly just be tanks in PvE? Should um, but Maybe they should not be ever tanks in PvP. How about that? Druids and paladins also have DPS specs. Um, and for ever. me, you know, I felt it was sort of a duty to the player to really make all these specs and and uh, classes viable and is in as many aspects of the game as possible. And so, really, that was one of my main main early focuses. Um, some of the things I worked on, uh, I set up a website with some uh, list of things I've worked on, but. Uh, uh, I'll put it in the description below. <laughs> but uh, some of the things I worked on was uh, the monk class. I design uh, was the main designer for the monk class. I uh... so it's your fault. You did this to me. You did you did this shit to me. Fucking I can't believe it, man. This is the fucking architect of my demise. Monks are the best class. Are my favorite class. Man, I hate monks. I play a warrior, man. If the, I fuck it, I hate I hate monks so much. God damn it, man. Bring him on all craft. If he was willing to, I would do it. You know, the Mistweaver really was a spec that I designed for myself. Just kind of the way that I like, you know, I like the heat. I actually really like Mistweaver. Uh, I think Mistweaver is awesome. Um, uh, I designed um, a lot of the PvP talents, PvP talent system, uh, worm mode. Um, in Shadowland. Wait, this guy did war mode? Good call, dude. Great call. War mode's fucking awesome. Yeah, thank God. Th this guy actually... He, that's fucking amazing, man. Yeah, I'm happy. And I, uh, some of the things I worked on was uh, Monk Legendaries, the Shadow Priest revamp I did. Um, and there's some other war mode content in there as well that I, that I hope turns out well. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, Good. why did I leave? I think the, the nervous laugh is not necessarily reassuring, but you know, hopefully it will be good. Um, it's complicated, right? I think there's a lot of different reasons, but, um, I think the main reason is just that, you know, for a while, probably too long, I've just been kind of unhappy with the state of the game. Right. And, um, it wasn't until when classic came out that I really kind of knew I could, I, I was able to, f to figure out why. And I think the reason why is that, um, you know, in wow. classic, the uh, the vision of the game is very clear, right? It's b big concepts like yeah. the world is the main character, the player is the, the wow. story, the community is the content. What and, the um, fuck? I think in, yeah. the, in the in the modern game, these things, these pillars still exist, but I think no, to, they, but they don't to though. a lesser degree. But they um, don't though. And I think the vision in the modern game is a little muddled in that way. Um, and so, what are some examples? Wait. Right? What are the way? Um, <laughs> so he cut it, man. Jesus Christ. Yeah, look at the... Oh, my God. He's like... Fuck. <laughs> That's sad, man. It's actually so sad. Wow. And so what are some examples, right? What do I mean exactly? Yeah. Um, one example, I think, is the uh, concept of the guild. I think in classic... The guild's a big deal, right? In order to do really anything at Endgame, you really need to be in a guild. And yeah. so really what this does is it kind of creates interdependence among players where they kind of really need each other in order to be in order to be um, successful. And uh, I think this can feel really restrictive at times, but... Uh... But... Yes, dude. They're learning? He's leaving! No, come back! No, this is... No! No! Oh, no! Oh, shit, man! Uh, ultimately, what it really does is it creates cohesion. It creates community. Oh, man. Um, and I think over time, players kind of fought against this just because, you know, they wanted to play the game... Uh, solo where they didn't really have to worry about other players or have to worry about like some guild leader barking orders at them 
And you know, I think that's fair, and I think um, this is um, that makes a lot of sense. Think Blizzard but I think should hire this guy. Ultimately, it's big changes like that have really changed the game. Um, yeah. You know, another example I think is the story. I think uh, you know, Warcraft and WoW has always had a story, but I think lately in in the modern game, I feel like the story is such a bigger part of it. I think the characters and and uh, all their own dramas, I think, really kind of soak up a lot of air in the game. Where yeah, they soak up a lot of fucking air. They soak up a lot of development resources too, man. Like, like I give a fuck if Jane is on her period and she decides to blow something else up, man. Who gives a fuck, dude? Like, I, I get that, like, yeah, the story matters, it's important, etc. But, like, with BFA, man, it had so much fucking... It, it had so much intricacies inside of it that it was incredible, man. It, it, it's absolutely fucking incredible. There were so much intricacies and so much things going on. Nobody had any fucking idea what was going on in the game. It, it's insane. It's insane. Like, I get what he's saying. I do, 100%. Like, the story is important, but I do think that they probably... They, they focus on it a bit much, man. Is Jane, Jane is going to make a tweet about me now? Is that right? <laughs> oh, boy. Whereas, you know, I think in a virtual world and an MMO, really the players are the story. You know, on Classic, what, what you know, what's funny is... Um, uh, uh, our guild gets a lot of drama, a lot of heat, because uh, a lot of the players in the guild like to prevent others. You don't you fucking say they're perjurers. Don't you fucking say they're perjurers. It's from resetting the Nixia buff. Uh, fucking God damn it. And he, look at his face. He's halfway smiling about it, too. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at it. God damn it, man. Uh, with the you know with the head um, and um, that, this really pisses off a lot of players and you yeah know, we get a lot of grief and people ban us from groups and things like that and yeah. uh, it's funny but it, it creates a player story and I think yeah it is you know it creates drama in the game it and does I think that's really what the modern game is missing is some you know this human element this this player drama um, and I This is so sad. Like, I'm sorry, but this is so absolutely fucking sad. Like, this guy's saying exactly the same things. Like, I've said that myself, like, dozens of times. And, fuck, man. I know players really love the story of WoW. I do, too. And, yeah. you know, I love a lot of the, the characters and the cinematics and things like that. But, again, I feel like this shift really does... Um, change the game and and yeah. and you know has a real effect um you know there's a lot of other minor things i feel like um we focus a lot too much on on the extrinsic rather the intrinsic gameplay i feel there's too much focus on these uh, progression systems and on engagement and instead i think we should really focus on the core features of the game you know like again like systems like the guild system um, I feel like we should be focusing on features that really, you know, features that really an MMO can only do, right? And of course, there's millions of players who really love WoW how it is currently and love the modern game. And I think that's really just the, 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 the point of it all is just that really it's, no! it's not so much a problem with the game as it is really just kind of a disconnect between no! what the modern game is and what, what you know, the, the game oh, used to no. be for me. Um, you know, I would say, though, that um, you could say the vision of the modern game has maybe changed, but um, I think even if that's true, I feel like that vision isn't so clear. Um, and I think I yeah, hear... Yeah, because they're trying to make the game for everybody, man. Like, that's what it is. They're like, yeah, we're going to make it to where, like, a grandma can play the game and then also a fucking, you know, 14-year-old Fortnite Zoomer. It's like you can't have grandma and Kyle playing in the same game. And th the funny thing about it is that whenever they didn't make content for grandmas and for Kyles, grandmas and Kyles played the game. But now, grandmas and Kyles don't play the game? It's only Jeremy's 31-year-old balding men that are engaged to a girl that they met in WoW 10 years ago. 
Those are the only people that are playing the game anymore. The, the Jeremy's. You're a Jeremy? I'm not engaged. Not quite. This a lot with players who they feel like, you know, what is WoW really about anymore, whatever it is. Yeah. And I think that's a problem. But I think the bigger problem actually is what I would hear from, um, you know, the developers on the team that they are also confused about what the vision of the game is, right? Um, what the fuck? And I think some of them think it, the vision has never changed. And some feel like it's, it's you know, this new modern take. And... Um, I think that it's See, that's what's so fucking stupid to me, man. Why the fuck do you give it a modern take? Why the fuck do you make it a modern game whenever all the modern MMOs suck dick? Why do you think, oh, Guild Wars, let's make it more like Guild Wars. Oh, yeah, the game that has a concurrent player base of fucking thousands of people? Or, wow, that has a concurrent player base of millions of people. Like, yeah, let's steal all the bad ideas from the bad MMOs and put them in our good MMO and make that one bad, too. I don't understand, man. Final Fantasy? Final Fantasy is good for certain people, but not everybody wants to play a game like Final Fantasy. Like, it's like this fucking... Final Fantasy Andes are fine, right? Like, you guys like your game all you want, but there's some people that just don't like that kind of a fucking game. Like, just get it, just get it into your head. Like, it's the same thing with me, right? Like, I can't see why somebody would like Final Fantasy. I watch it, it's not appealing to me. I don't, I, somebody watches, plays Final Fantasy, watches WoW, they're like, I don't see why that's not appealing to me. You see what I'm saying? Like, everybody likes different shit. That's all there is to it. It's completely fine. I don't like cat girls. I'm not into cat girls. I'm really not. I, I really, I really mean that the biggest challenge for the team going forward um yeah you know i really love this quote that's that's something like um uh if you want if you want to build a ship you don't drum up the people and tell them what to do and tell this guy to gather wood and this guy to you tell them where they're gonna go uh, you know build the sail or whatever it is instead you teach them to yearn for the the vast and endless sea and uh, in doing that, yeah. you know, you don't need to tell people what to do because they just know what they where they're going and you know what what, what the that's fucking exactly it, dude. Is you never worried about what you were gonna do at sixty because you spent fifty nine levels getting ready for it. You spent fifty nine fucking levels getting ready for that shit. Goal is, and uh, so yeah, I really feel like if there's a big challenge for the the WoW team, it's really to figure out what that vision is and what the modern game is and how it differentiates from from classic. Um, as for the company, you know, I think it's a very different company than it was 13 years ago. I think uh, the company is so much bigger than it used to be. I remember there was like one building, and now there's like 16 or I don't know how many there are now. Um, and so not that that's a bad thing. I think that's a great thing because it really mm -hmm. um, tells you that uh, Blizzard is successful and that people want more of uh, its, its, its ideas, of its, of its creations, and that's great. But I think, you know, if there's any challenge with the studio um, now or going forward, it's really just a challenge of scale that any company goes through uh, once they grow. Um, and so... Um, but I think ultimately, you know, I think WoW and Blizzard will persevere. I think they have incredibly talented people that work there, and I think the IPs are so strong and great. Um, and so I think really ultimately long-term, WoW and Blizzard will be totally fine. Um, yeah. But I think this brings it back to me now, which I think, you know, all these things have sort of forced me to reflect on, on, on what I want to do and, you know, where I want to be. And it's sort of, um, this is really reminded me of um uh you know why i wanted to work on wow in the first place and i think i'll talk about the xqc stuff afterwards okay that really is because i wanted to work on a virtual world um yeah and i think ultimately despite its flaws you know wow really is still the king of virtual worlds and I it think is. will be for a long time yeah but um i used to think blizzard maybe you know would hold that crown forever or be the one who would you know, discover the next big virtual world. But these days, I just I just don't know if that's true. Um, but what I do know is that I want to be part of that, right? I want to be part of the the next big virtual world. 
um i think you know some that's actually crazy for me to hear that man like that's actually insane wow like this is it's so fucking sad to me to see that because like you see this shit and the guy is saying the exact same shit that everybody i think wants to hear like this guy I don't think he said anything that I disagree with except for the fact that he made monks. The, I mean, everybody makes mistakes, right? Everybody makes mistakes. But besides him making monks, I, I think that he did a good job, man. And it's crazy for me to hear. Like, this guy, like, was basically, it seems like he was mentored by Kevin Jordan, who, like, we've had on all crafts. And it was probably one of the most insightful all craft discussions we ever had. Like, it, it it's fucking sad, man. It really is. It just fucking sucks. People say that virtual worlds are sort of over and that games now are more about like battle royales or mobile projects yeah. or whatever that is. <clears throat> but I think that's insane. I think that's totally wrong. I think the the real world, you know, sucks in a lot of ways. And I think yeah. these virtual worlds that we create are are so amazing and so you know, are gonna become more increasingly essential to our lives in the future. Um so if the future is future is going to be virtual worlds, you know, that's really what I want to be be a part of. Um and so that's really what I'm doing. I'm I'm looking around, I'm seeing what's possible um, I don't know what I'm going to do exactly yet, but, uh, you know, when I figure that out, you'll be the first to know, uh, to my Blizzard family, um, and the WoW team, you know, I'm rooting for, uh, Shadowlands. I know it's going to be incredibly successful. I'm so excited to play it. Uh, and I guess, you know, only days from now, um, I'm sure it's going to be a massive success. And of course I'm going to play it. Um, I've played WoWs every day almost since when it came out. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll be playing, you know, with WoW, war mode on <laughs> for anybody who, uh, so I guess he plays horde. Um, so there we go. Uh, it seems like he plays horde guys. Uh, problem solved there. Uh, yep. Plays horde. That's great to know. Wow. What a surprise. Uh, for those of, for the rest of you who've made it to the end of this video. Well, um, thank you for listening to my Ted talk. Um, we'll talk soon. It's Bellure. Big agree. Big agree. <laughs> True, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to respond back to that myself. <laughs> Big agree. True, dude. <laughs> See, bellure has been watching my own React videos. He's learning. I, I like that. Yeah, true, dude. <laughs> okay, so this is actually probably one of the most and depressing videos I've heard in a long time, man. Like, and I think that, like, really what fucking says a lot of it to me is, like, the fact that, like, whenever he's talking about how he didn't like the direction of the game, he just looks off into the distance and then cuts the fucking video, man. It just says a lot. And it's sad for me to see somebody who seems to share, like, a lot of the same ideals and a lot of the same visions that I do for the game and that I think a lot of the player base does, or at least people that watch me does. And to see that a person like that feel like they're not really part of the community anymore and i don't really know exactly like everything that happened and all of that kind of stuff but at the end of the day it's really sad for me to see that happen it is like it's really fucking sad for me to see that happen